right, gang, here we go. Welcome to a very special edition of Grassroots Motorsports Live presented by CRC Industries. I'm JG Pasterjack. We are here uh, in the beautiful La Quinta Inn in Melbourne, Florida, because we are in process of working with an outfit called the Vet Doctor to replace the clutch uh, and flywheel on our C5Z06 project. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit tonight. So the plan originally was to come at you guys live right from the vet doctor and talk a little bit about the, the clutch and flywheel and everything we were putting in the car while we were doing it. Um, technical glitches through a, through a monkey wrench and that. So we're here at our regular time. If you, if you tried to watch earlier, I apologize. What we ended up doing was just taping the conversation or digitally recording the conversation. So we got some really, really cool tips we're gonna show you tonight from those folks at the vet, vet doctor about replacing the clutch in a C5. So we're going to uh, going to get to that in just a second. I'm uh, I'm looking at a lot of my uh, my friends here already. We got uh, our buddy uh, Dinesh and uh, and Steve. A lot of our regular Corvette people. If you're watching us on YouTube tonight, welcome aboard. If you're watching us on Facebook, thing we ask everybody on Facebook when we start out is throw a comment in that comment section. It's gonna fool the Facebook algorithms a little bit and boost us up a little bit. I don't care if it's a, look, I don't care if it's a good comment. I don't care if it's a sensible comment. Just bang on the keyboard with your, with your fists for all I care, but throw a comment down there. Before we get going, let me tell you about the folks that make this show possible. Talking about our friends at CRC Industries. They are right, uh, yeah, yeah, they're right down here somewhere. You can check them out at crcindustries.com for all your automotive and chemical needs, whether it's brake clean or uh, lubricants or carb cleaner, or fuel injection cleaner, check them out at crcindustries.com. Even better, check them out at a major retailer near you, Lowe's, Home Depot, O'Reilly Auto Parts, Napa Auto Parts, Advance Auto Parts, any of those places, you can get that CRC stuff. Also, our friends at Autobooks Aerobooks, autobooks-aerobooks.com, world's greatest bookstore out there in Burbank, California. If you can't make it out to Burbank, check them out online at autobooks-aerobooks.com. Tens of thousands of books, magazines, DVDs, uh, collectibles on anything that anything with an engine and wheels and wings or rotors or uh, dirigibles, whatever. They got books and magazines on it. Very cool place. Live events every week going on there too. All right. We, uh, yes, Andrew says he's here to learn about C5 stuff. You have come to the right place, sir. Let's talk a little bit about what we're doing tonight, and I apologize in advance. I am all over the place tonight uh, because I am set up in a La Quinta Inn um, here in Melbourne, Florida, and it's a it's a miracle we even got got a broadcast going tonight. But here's what we're going to do: instead of being able to broadcast live from the shop, we recorded several conversations with um, Keith Duncan at Vet Doctor. They are a top-notch Corvette service place down here in Melbourne, Florida, or up here in Melbourne, Florida, if you're watching us from uh, Miami or Fort Myers. And we're talking a little bit about putting a clutch in a C5. It's not as simple an operation as it is in other cars. Brian wants to know what kind of, uh, of a clutch we're installing. We installed a single disc center for, or sorry, a single disc, oh my God, Ignore what I just said. Uh, we installed a single disc quartermaster clutch flywheel and pressure plate. The entire rotating assembly of the uh, of of our 10.3 inch quartermaster clutch flywheel pressure plate about 11 pounds lighter than the stock setup. Stock setup comes in just under 50 pounds for a clutch flywheel and pressure plate, and this quartermaster setup comes in um, right high 30s, like 38 and a, and a half pounds. So Right about, I have to check the actual math, but it's about 11 and a half pounds lighter than the uh, the stock stuff that came out of there. Um, so yeah, Nick says we could have just broadcast from his house there. They're right up the coast in uh, in Cocoa Beach somewhere. Fellow Corvette owners. So here's what we're going to uh, going to do tonight. I want to show you some videos we shot today with Vet Doctor clips of. The, the process and other things you want to look for when you're installing a clutch in a C5. When you install a clutch in a C5, you have to literally take out the entire drivetrain. Everything from the engine back to the, the transaxle, which sits in the back of the car. 
doesn't have a transmission bolted to the engine. It has a torque tube connecting the engine with a transaxle, which is in the back of the car. So you have to take down the rear suspension cradle, uh, take down the transaxle from the back, take down the torque tube, everything between that engine and, and um, the rear end. So there's a lot of stuff that has to come out of the car. So there's a lot of other things that you really should service at the same time you're doing a clutch, because there's a lot of stuff out of the car. So first thing we're going to, to look at is the transmission itself. Um, there's a few items on the transmission you can either look at on a pre-purchase inspection or look at while you have it out of the car that will make it a little bit easier to ascertain the condition of that transmission. So I will get our first video queued up here. Um, I'm going to be uh, sort of watching the comments here. These are pre-taped segments, but I'll be trying to answer comments while we're doing this. So let us take a look at the, uh, the first video here. This is going to be uh, Keith Duncan at Vet Doctor describing some of the um, some of the areas on the transmission you want to take a closer look at either while it's out or before you get out of the car maybe you're inspecting a car for purchase so here we go first of all when this transmission comes out it comes out as a huge assembly for those of you in the driveway laying on your back this is not the job for you you're going to need a shop to do it a um, couple things that I want to point out right here Here's an axle seal. Everybody knows what an axle seal is. They all know that the axle comes out of here and they're known to leak. On all of these, I've, I, it's rare to find one that this outer O-ring seal is not leaking. So this is another thing that you're going to want to separate, put in a new O-ring and seal it up with your new seal as you put it in. Once you got the new seal in and you put it back up in the car, you got to be real careful in lining up that axle boot when it goes into where it splines in and locks into place. So our, it looks like our axle shafts are weeping there a little bit, which you say is fairly absolutely, typical. Absolutely, absolutely. We've got a, a weep here, and a weep is a very small leak. There yeah. is a big difference between a leak and a weep. Yeah. A weep is something you can live with five, seven, ten thousand miles. A leak is something you need to look at today. But it looks like our O-rings are actually in pretty good shape. I don't. Yeah, I don't these see are miraculously. This side's a little darker than this side, which shows just a little bit because they do create pressure and it's going to find the weakest point, the, the easiest way out, so to speak. And this one here has a little bit on the left side, and believe me, they're inherent from leaking on the left, without a doubt. So, the fact that those aren't leaking, since it's out, will, will we replace those anyway? Or if it's not broke, you don't want to fix it? Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But if you look at the cost to replace these seals later, <laughs> as a weep will turn into a, a leak. So. I would, I would suggest replacing them now. It's, it's simple, it's easy, it's maybe another $50 in parts. And the fluid, not so much cheap, but the fluid needs to get changed anyway. You've got it out in the part. Awesome. Okay, so take us forward a little bit. I see, I see uh, the assembly up on top of there is, is oozing a little bit. What's, what's going on there? What we have here is we've got more leaks. This right here is your vent tube. And in extreme uh, drivability conditions, in extreme conditions, which this is a track car, I would consider that extreme, there's only so much pressure this thing can put out. As fluid starts to generate, kick around, it becomes a mist. That mist will come out of here, and as you can see, it will roll down. <clears throat> Excuse me. As the wind comes down across the car, everybody says, yeah, it's a Corvette, it's sealed underneath. Wind is wind, my friend. It's going to take this fluid, run it back down, and this is exactly what it looks like right here. Not this. This is your axle leak we were talking about before. The other thing to pay close attention to is if you're going to be pulling this, these two side pieces apart, you want to go ahead and pull this off of the end of the transmission. This is your rear differential housing from here to here. This is where all the business happens. Everybody talks about 410s, 411s. It's all built right up in here. So in between here and here, you've got a seal. There's a seal that keeps fluid in the rear diff, and there's a seal that keeps the fluid in the transmission. Those two can't mix, totally different fluids. This is a, a, a transmission fluid, Dexron 3 is what it came with. Dexron 6 is perfect. There is a sinker mesh fluid that works in here just fine too. That's a trade secret, it's not published. <laughs> I'm telling you how it works. <laughs> the next thing to keep your eye on is once, once this is out and up here in this position is right here is a plate. On this plate is where your shift shaft goes in and your input shaft in the transmission goes in. Plate's only this thick. However, there's a seal right here and there's a seal right here. They tend to leak also. That's a bigger job. That is, you pull this front plate of the transmission off, 
and you replace this seal in this seal. Anybody that's ever had a transmission problem, look under the car and what's that fluid? Oh, it's just a red drip, just leave it. Let me tell you, 10 hours to pull this thing out and apart, you know, depending on what the labor rate is, you're looking at that little drip, and if you're looking to buy a car, and he says, that just leaks a little bit, just keep the fluid full. If you're ready to spend money later, you're, you're looking at $3,500, $5,000 to get that fixed. So while it's out, we may as well, at the very least, inspect that stuff and probably, probably replace it because you've got to pull it back out anyway to, to, to do it. Yep. And since you're, you're doing service anyway. There's a, uh, what's the drain plug in, in the front there that's uh, locked This drain plug on? is a, it's not a drain plug. This is a uh, bore hole okay. right here. This is for um, the, this transmission actually has provisions for a pump in later years. And this is just how it was, they, they started that out. This is not a drain hole. Your drain holes, excuse me, your drain and fill holes on this transmission, one right here, and you fill this one through this hole right here. Oh, through the, 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 the that's the reverse sensor there? Yes, yes. So uh, any, it doesn't look like there's any leakage from that reverse sensor. Is there like, like a crush washer on there or anything that needs to get replaced? Yeah, or? most of them they do have, they, they'll put a thread locker around the threads, okay. and then there'll be uh, an aluminum, looks like an AC seal, a metal uh, AC seal. It fits right on there perfectly. Don't over torque that. You put it in until it stops and give it maybe, I don't know, a third of a turn, quarter of a turn, something in that. You'll get the idea. You get the feeling. So with proper maintenance, is there is there a weak link to these transmissions at all, or are they they're fairly bulletproof? Now, in the beginning, we were talking about it being a get drag. This is a Tremec transmission, and you can drop this thing from an airplane, put it back in your Corvette, and drive home from work. This, this these things are bulletproof. When catastrophic failure happens, I'm sorry, you vet owners, it's driver error, <laughs> <laughs> straight up. <laughs> So there is a little discussion of the actual transmission itself um, and props to Keith who did a fantastic job under duress today. The weather was unbelievably gnarly today. In fact, you'll see in some of these subsequent videos that the weather actually changes so fast during the shot that the light changes so much that it like screws the white, the white balance up. So uh, Keith did a fantastic job explaining a lot of this stuff and I learned, learned a lot today. Um, Let's see if we got any uh, questions. Yeah, Angela says uh, Shark Week's on the TV and GRM's on the phone. It's a good night. We are, we are happy to be here. Uh, somebody on my personal page asked me if uh, the, the internet at the La Quinta was fast enough to even broadcast this tonight. Uh, fun fact, no, it's not. So I'm actually using, oh crap, hang on. Maybe I'm not, I just unplugged it. I'm actually using this, uh, this little wireless hotspot here to do, do the broadcast, even though uh, this card was in my room advertising the free and fast, uh, the Internet Gratis Rapido Ultra. Um, you know what, Laquinta, you let me down on this one, and I don't care if you're watching this. Come to my room and fight me, because your Internet is, internet is not fast enough to do this, uh, even though you have this fancy card that you probably paid a lot of. The money you spent on this card, you should have spent on better Internet service, for God's sakes. Okay, so yeah, the Andrew says that there are a lot of while you're in there type components to change. And the next video we're going to look at is uh, some more of those while you're in there components because when you take this, the trans transmission down from the back of the car, a lot of your stuff around the fuel tank is then exposed and there's some areas to look at up there, areas to look at in the axles um, and, and or, you know, around where, where those axle shafts connect to the, to the differential. So let us take a look at the next area you want to look at. We're sort of moving forward through the car now, and this is going to be talking about a little bit of uh, some other stuff in the rear of the car you want to take a look at. Uh, let's... Um Let me get caught up on some questions here. Um yeah, man, a lot of people on the East Coast are having bad weather. Um, our, our friend Ian is having some, some weather issues up in Southeast Pennsylvania. We had, in Florida here, we had, um, for a while, some nice afternoon spring showers going on. And then we had like a month of nothing. And then in the last three days, we've probably gotten eight or ten inches of rain. And, and it's just, it's too much rain, too compacted. All right, so let us, uh, let us take a look now at some other things in the rear of the car you're going to want to look at while you have that transaxle out and here is keith once again to explain 
All right, so we removed, at this point, we've removed, removed the trans and the torque tube. We're gonna work our way forward a little bit. While we've got all this stuff out, is there anything up, up in this area in the back of the car where our fuel tanks are, where our axles are, um, anything else we need to need to look at while while this stuff has been dropped? You're opening a can of worms right there. <laughs> right now, if you look at these, these CV axles, these CVs, the CV joints right here, you can actually see the, the dirt and grime that comes off of it. And like we were talking about before on the transmission differential hanging out there, there's telltales of a seat. Generally, a seat will collect dirt and it won't have a clean spot. An active leak will be clean with the fluid that it's, that's running out of it. These have had fluid on them and it's an obvious thing. Next thing you want to look for is your CV boots. Um, you've got an outer and an inner on both sides. Easiest thing that I've found to do is you just take the boot and bend it just like that. And you can roll it over a little bit more, bend it, and you bend it. And what you're looking for are splits down the center and splits on the outer edges. You also have a telltale of, of a spray. Yeah. And, and it's just it's a mess, that's for sure. The other thing while you have it out is back down here on my cross member are the tie rods go here. Yes, it's got adjustable tie rods like the conventional front steering, only they don't steer, they just hold the car. Because of the way the suspension is designed, they gotta be able to move up and down. The boots will split or the tie rods will actually get loose just from holding the torque of the car. Next thing we were talking about, another question you asked me is gas tanks. Gas tanks, huge. Any of you C5 owners that have had that gas smell and somebody's told you it, was, it could be five to 10 grand to get your gas tanks replaced, dual tank system on this, a crossover pipe with a vent system that runs between the two of them. In order to get these gas tanks out, everything we did to change this clutch with, aside from pulling the clutch has to happen. The differential and everything comes pouring out with the torque tube and then one tank comes down, the next tank comes down. These things had a recall on, on some of the models, not really a recall, more of a special policy. Not all of them leaked, some of them did. There was a glue seam where the tanks put together and they leak. So this is what happens when they said, yeah, we put a tank in there, we covered it for you. Don't think it was just a drop in the hat. That was a big deal. So if you need, if you need a fuel pump in one of those tanks, you're pulling the, pulling the trans out, you're pulling the rear yes. cradle out. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you caught this. I, I forget whether we actually mentioned it or not, but you could, uh, you could actually see that one of the bolts holding the, the right rear hub in was like backed out about an eighth of an inch. Like just, you know, there's, there's three bolts that hold, hold the hubs in. And we're actually be replacing the rear hubs tomorrow as well. But uh, yeah, one of them was like just backed out a little bit. I don't remember, I don't think I did that. I, I, don't, I have no reason I would just randomly loosen the hubs. Uh, but I might have. I, you know, uh, look, Ambien's a hell of a drug, so I might have just been out there one night loosening my hubs at random. But, again, another great, uh, there's, there's lots of open area back there once you get that transaxle out of the car and, and that torque tube out of the car that you can do a lot of inspections back there that you, you can't really do with everything in place the, you know, the, way, the way you can with that stuff out. Um, guys, thank you, uh, thank you very much for watching tonight. We got three more videos to come. Before we get to that, though, I want to tell you guys a little bit about the folks that make this show possible. So give them a little bit of consideration. I want to first tell you about our friends at Autobooks Aerobooks, out there in Burbank, California, the world's greatest bookstore, bar none. World's greatest bookstore in Burbank, California. You can check them out if you can't make it out to Burbank at Autobooks-Aerobooks.com. Tens of thousands of books, magazines, videos, DVDs, collectibles on anything with uh, race cars, street cars, shop manuals, history books, photography books, great pieces of automotive literature there. You can pick them up with your hands and read them. Also, one of the hubs of the automotive community in Southern California, author signings out there every week, uh, cars and coffee events, cruise-ins. Check them out, will you, at autobooks-aerobooks.com. If you can't make it out there in person, check them out online. You can buy anything from their collection right online. If you can make it out there, though, it is worth the trip to Burbank to check the place out and hopefully catch one of their live events going on at the shop, which go on there uh, with great regularity. Um, uh, all right, so uh, Greg says, so much for a C5 being a performance bargain. Still really is a performance bargain. There are a couple of, of, of service uh, items that 
tend to be a little more complicated than, than they need to be. This is one of them. If you're going to replace the clutch, there's a lot of other things you can do at the same time, but you're still looking at a car that you can you can get fantastic examples of for under twenty thousand dollars. You're not going to find many four hundred horsepower cars for under twenty grand. Um, so I am thinking that uh, that that yeah, it, it it really still is in that bargain category. And then I said we should we should put some Nordlocks on our um, on our, on our hub bolts. I think we're going to be doing that when we get those those new hubs in there. All right, here's what we're going to look at next. We're still moving forward in the car. So next we're going to take a look at the, uh, the the rear seal area on the back of the engine. Once you get, scratch my ear here, once you get the torque tube out, once you get the, uh, the, the clutch off the, off the back of the engine, you have very nice access to uh, the back of the oil pan, to the rear engine cover, to the, um, to the rear main seal of the engine if you're taking the pilot bearing out. So there are definitely some service areas back there that you can take care of. The, the rear engine cover being a very common leak area. So we will take a close look at that now. Here, once again, is our, um, our friend Keith Duncan from The Vet Doctor. Moving forward a little bit, we've got the torque tube out. We'll look at that specifically in a little bit, but Looking at the uh, the back of the motor up here now, where the where we've got the rear the rear cover off already, and that's that's an issue you were telling. Yeah, me. the rear cover is an issue. A lot of times you'll get an oil leak, and you look underneath your car on this graded part on the bottom of the oil pan, you'll see oil sitting here, and people th will say it's an oil pan's leaking. Other people will say that it's the the rear main seal that's leaking. Both of them could be right. Generally, most of the time, your oil leaks come in on either side of here. This is an oil feed for your cam system. This gasket likes to leak here and likes to leak here. Run down the side and it looks like an oil pan right here. It's got nowhere else to go. Gravity takes over and there you are. Your rear main seal is gonna sit right here and I've got a cover over there. There's a redesigned cover um, that takes the place of this. Now, if you take out your powertrain, your back half, so to speak, and you say, well, I don't, rear main seal's not leaking. Once again, to change this, everything you've seen so far still comes back apart. For the, let's call it 150 bucks, to get this replaced, there's no more headaches. It's, it's done, No more. nobody's pulling this back half out again. And if you do the updated version, it's replaced better than it was originally. Basically. Absolutely, and I can show you, the, show you why there's a difference, what the update was and why it works so much better. We have changed literally hundreds of these rear covers and I don't see them come back, so, I just don't. And then in, in between here where the torque tube sits, you know, not really much going on, there's about a thousand Screws to take out to yes, get to get yes, to get that actually, cover. Thirty-six out. screws is eighteen on either side. <laughs> and if you think you're going to leave it out to lighten up your car, and uh, forgive me, but I don't see it. Yeah. That plate is structural. If you just take a pan up and look at how this car is constructed, if this thing wants to drop like this, this pan holds it together. It's a it's a lightweight aluminum thing. There's a bunch of screws. A lot of stiff and yeah. there, that will hold the center of your car up, and it won't pop your roof off and. I've seen some cracked stuff that never should have been cracked. We look underneath and this is missing. Cause he's got cool exhaust and sounds great. Until. So don't let until happen to you. Exactly. This is an aluminum with rubber impregnated gasket. This is the uh, original design of it. And the new design has the same style gasket, only it's a little thicker. And I'll show you why in just a second. Um, as we were talking before about seeps and leaks, a seep will catch dirt and start to leave a mess. That's what that has. He did not have of active pouring leak. However, we're not pulling the back half out again, we're doing it one time. Here's the mess that proves where the oil starts to come out of on these cars. This, this would have been a potential leak. Now if you look, notice that this is a 10 millimeter bolt head that's on this, on this cover. This is the original design 10 millimeter bolt head. Now this new design has 13 millimeter bolt head with a built in shoulder same as those, only it's a thicker, beefier bolt. It covers more. They've given you more room around the hole as compared to this one here. And the, uh, the torque is evenly distributed over a larger area. Now this gasket's gonna look identical to this one, only the, the mating surface, the boss where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, is uh, thicker and it's a different style rubber. Um, I'm not sure what they changed it to, but you know, rubber's rubber, it's going to work. 
So you may have noticed during that segment that about halfway through, Keith turned red all of a sudden. Uh, that, that was not some sort of hell mouth opening up. That was not some sort of portal to a dimension of pure chaos. That was literally the, the clouds for this afternoon Florida thunderstorm we had. The clouds came in so fast, the light changed so fast, the white balance on the camera, this, this doesn't work right now, the, the white balance on the camera changed immediately. So yeah, that's, that's how fast our afternoon thunderstorms in Florida uh, crop up this, this time of year. And it has been straight up gnarly here the last few days. So some interesting information there about that rear engine cover and about the upgraded piece that you can get from, from GM. Uh, different bolt design, a lot more, a lot, a lot bigger spread of the torque being, being applied by those bolts. So a lot less prone to leakage from that rear engine cover. And again, something that you have easy and complete access to when that clutch is off that otherwise you have literally no access to. So really, it, you know, a lot of this stuff doesn't need to be done, but if it does need to be done at a, at a later time, you've got to go through the exact same process to get that, um, get that in, entire, what they call the back end, the, the, the entire torque tube, transaxle, um, rear assembly out. So it's a lot of preventive maintenance you may as well do at that time. Uh, next up, we are going to take a look at, what, what is next up? Okay, we're going to take a, actually a little bit closer look at the torque tube itself, what's going on in, in there, how to take it apart, what you want to look for as far as maintenance inside the torque tube. We're talking about stuff like bearings and drive shaft couplers. Anybody that has a BMW is going to be familiar with the rubber drive shaft couplers in the, um, in the C5, they call them uh, guibos in, in, in BMWs. I think there's actually a BMW part that fits the C5 that people have used in a pinch when that, that's all they could, uh, they could get their hands on. Before we go to this next video though, do me a favor folks. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, go down here wherever you're, if you're watching us on your phone, if you're watching us on your, on your computer, go down here, throw us a like, throw us a share. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube tonight, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would definitely appreciate that. This video will be available uh, immediately after the show or shortly after the show on YouTube. So if you missed any of the great tips that uh, the vet doctor is sharing with us tonight, this will be available on the Grassroots Motorsports YouTube page. I want to uh, give a big shout out to the folks at the vet doctor. Uh, Bob Steinmetz, the owner, is a factory trained GM technician. Uh, Keith who gave us all of our tips today, another factory trained GM guy. Um, all, pretty much all of their techs there are, are folks that have a, a, a strong background in uh, you know, factory based GM stuff and they are, uh, there, there's some very, very cool stuff there. There is, uh, let's see, what the, the four generations of, of uh, five generations of Corvette. The only, only thing I didn't see there today was a C1, um, but everything else was sitting around, even a few Cadillac XLRs sitting around today. Um, so, <laughs> yes, now, we're, now everybody is in, in the chat yelling, Guibo! Um, because it's a fun word to say. All right, next we are going to take a look at the torque tube itself. This is the, uh, the housing that connects the back of the engine with the front of the transaxle. Contained within that housing is the spinning drive shaft or, or prop shaft, as it were. Because this is a transaxle car, the drive shaft is always spinning at engine revolution. So it's spinning much faster than a standard drive shaft that's been reduced through gearing to, uh, to, to driving at rear end speed. So because it's spinning so fast, it, it, for safety reasons, for uh, balancing reasons, containment reasons, they contain it within an exterior tube. Anybody that's ever had a you know, 944 or, or a C5, C6, C7, is familiar with, with, with how this works. So uh, we're going to take a little bit more detailed look at the, uh, the, the, the torque tube itself and some of the service opportunities within that torque tube. Once again, here is Keith Duncan from The Vet Doctor. Okay, so this is our torque tube, which anybody who's ever had 
a Porsche 944 or a, or a C5 or anything that has a, a transaxle is familiar with. It's essentially a housing that contains the drive shaft and unlike you know, most cars we're familiar with where the transmission's in the front, the drive shaft always spins at full engine RPM all the time, so it's protected by this, this housing to, uh, you know, to keep, keep that, that high RPM drive shaft protected. Uh, but it also, you know, the, there's wear items here. There's bearings that, that, that hold that, that prop shaft up. Um, yep. what, for an external inspection, before that even comes out of the car, is there anything we're looking for on the torque tube itself? Nothing that you can actually look at and see on a torque tube. What you'll notice about a torque tube is it'll sound like there's a gremlin underneath your car shaking a box of rocks. That's generally the noise that you'll hear when it comes to uh, having a bad coupler or a bearing or both. In, in uh, most of your C5s, C6s, they all have this design. Now, in that, let me just bring this up and I'll show you. The bearings for the back of this torque tube sit within this. There's two of them here and down in the front there's, there's a third one. This takes the place of what used to be called a U-joint. <laughs> uh, oddly enough, this is made of rubber and it's bolted, it holds two pieces together. This right here in the center is, uh, that means this was balanced, this is a balanced weight. So as true and quiet and, and uh, vibration free, we'll call it, as a Corvette is, this is a huge part of why. It's a large, long rotating mass that has to be true because of the end of it is the transmission. You get the transmission reverbing and that's it. It's on from there. So anybody that's had a BMW is familiar with, with those uh, drive shaft Weebos that are, yeah. are wear items essentially. Yep. Ours looks surprisingly good in there. What are you looking at for a, for a failure mode on, on, on that? I look for failure mode and oddly enough, I have a failed one right uh, here in my hand. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Yeah. But I have got cracks throughout, excuse me. There's cracks all over this piece right here. And what that is, this rubber started out as soft, just like the one that we just got out of this, this 04. This one came out of, I think it was an 08, and it's dried and cracked. Now, did this thing spend its life in the winter and just finally make it to Florida? And I got it, anything's possible. I don't know, it could be the material that they used, but a lot of them crack and these will appear cracked and you'll see it. This will eventually get bad enough and these metal sleeves where the bolts run through will actually wear out. Now this thing starts to bang around because it can't stay true, because this is going to be an out of balance. And there's a couple different sizes of those, right? Yeah, yeah. What's well, the bolt size mainly is what holds it together. These, this one happens to be 10 millimeter bolt, bolt size. The ones that are in your car, this, this 04, they're 12 millimeter. Is that a Z06 versus standard C5 thing, or was it just a, a year thing? What's, what's the difference going to be? It was who be? picked up what torque tube. I oh, mean, really? There are certain options that go with it, like um, uh, Z06 would have a 12. You don't have a Z06, or is that? Oh, that yeah, is yeah. a Z06. Then that is possible. It's just a higher horsepower car, Z51, that kind of thing, will cause these larger couplers to be put in. So you guys recommended OEM couplers for for us. Yes. And that that's not the first time we've heard that. There there are some up, upgraded options out there: yes. urethane and solid aluminum. Yep. Any thoughts? It seems like going solid would tend to introduce vibration back, or or at least get rid of some vibration damping. Well, but, yeah, it does. It does remove yeah. the dampening um, going. Uh, going solid. The problem with the solid ones is they're actually short-lived. Nothing against any of you guys that use the, the solid ones, but you're going to start to develop and hear noises. These bushings I was talking about earlier, they take the brunt of the hit because if it wasn't for these bolts, it wouldn't work. This rubber just keeps the bolts in line and keeps them together. So that's what drives the car. So once the rubber starts to wear out, these metal things will bounce back and forth and it just becomes a, a, a rattle box. They're great. They hold all of the foot pounds of torque you want to put on them for a short amount of time. Now we're back to pulling the, the back half of the car back apart yeah. again. And we hear all kinds of horror stories about, about the, the drive shaft couplers, about aftermarket OEM replacement, like non-OEM replacement couplers. Yes. Yeah. Those, those, seem, 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 think, those seem particularly weak. Uh, I wouldn't even or, say weak. They're there to do a job. Okay. They're, they do the best job that they can do, and the tried and true General Motors torque tubes, these couplers that were put in here, they got you this far. They're going to wear. Have you ever changed a U-joint before? You say, well, it's not supposed to wear out. Let yeah. me just put in somebody's. You know, go back to the original. It lasted this long. It's designed to handle the foot-pounds of torque that the car can handle. Yeah. And again, ours looked pretty good. Yours are still soft, yeah. But we we got them out anyway and rather than have to pull everything apart again yes. as preventative maintenance we're going back to square one and and, and replacing them yes uh and what, what else show me the bearings in there um what 
Well, actually, uh, you should, Show, show them that uh, snap ring ply. That the, the, the trickiest part about getting this thing apart is the the this piece of the, the shark shaft. size snap ring pliers you got to use. Fits inside the torque tube, and it's held in by the end of the bearing, and this snap ring. The snap ring sits against the end of this in a groove at the end of the tube. Don't try to do this with a, with a couple of screwdrivers and a buddy in here. <laughs> hold this. This is expensive, but if if you don't want to lose fingers, it'll come up. And cut you in the jaw however you want to do it this thing I got this one from General Motors and let me tell you it's a bear it grabs on it does the job once you get it out you put it on the ground you actually step on this the spring tension behind this thing is crazy wow it is crazy so th this is you know th this is a, a fairly technical operation but a, a skilled amateur could could pull this off but there's certain just physical things like you've got to Pull the transmission and the, and the torque tube out at the right angle, so you have to you, you have to use the transmission jack. You're not going to use a couple yes. of floor jacks yes. under there. You might get away with it, but it's not really the right way to do it. Exactly. And exactly. you've got to have the right snap ring pliers. You, you're, you're not going to get Otherwise, away with that. So you will be in some trouble. You yeah. Have an interesting point. Let me just point this out to you. Right on the torque tube, it's showing you. You only go down so far because of the compactness of this car the firewall will actually get cracked. If you lower your transmission too far, that intake manifold can break or you can crack your firewall. So the guy on his back may have a better chance of not cracking it because it's not up in the air that high. But if you're up on the, up on the jack and you're, you just mentioned that the uh, average amateur, the wrench turner guy, yeah. um, can turn it, that guy needs to do some reading. Well, what there, we're yeah. looking at bearing wise, if you actually get this thing out and apart, this bearing right here, you will absolutely know what's going on. You'll spin it with your fingers, and it is that simple. This is a sealed roller bearing, pre-greased. There's no maintenance, no nothing. When it's bad, it's bad. Um, this has to be pressed off. This actually is a dust cap. Keeps, keeps any debris off of the end of the bearing that seals the bearings in at the end, on the side of the bearing. Um, and when they go bad, there's one right here and two back here. They're not the same bearing. This is different. These two are the same. So that's, that's basically it on the bearings. So give me some, some general numbers that we're looking at so far. What's a, what's a coupler cost? What do these bearings cost? Coupler's about 150. The bearings are probably $60, $70 a piece. Um, and that's for the OEM stuff, basically, That's for right? OEM stuff, yeah. yes. All right, uh, a few comments about that, that last uh, section. We, and we, and we had some, some in, people interested in, in those snap ring pliers that they use to, to remove that snap ring at the front of the torque tube. So we talked a little bit about you know, what it takes to actually perform this operation. And I w if, if you're watching this show, if you read Grassroots Motorsports Magazine, your technical ability is probably, you know, this, this job, oh, hang on. This job probably falls within your technical ability, but there are some traps. And, and that's what we, some of the things we wanted to show you with the show tonight, there are some definite traps in this, and uh, one of the one of the biggest traps is you've got to lower the, the this this entire drive line assembly, tilt it backwards to slide it out out the back of the car. Well, if you saw it printed right on the side of that that torque tube, which you interestingly enough you can't really see until you take the torque tube out, and it's like, hey Charlie, guess what? You did this wrong. But that, that is a definite trap. You've got to maintain the correct angle to slide that out the back. So if you're doing this in your driveway with a couple of floor jacks, there is potential for disaster. This is something you really want to do with a proper transmission jack at the, at the bare minimum, at the, at the you know, Im immensely bare minimum is use a proper transmission jack for this. I, I would not attempt this without a transmission jack. And also those snap ring pliers, uh, you, I mean, the, the, you could put your fist through, through that snap ring, and that is that is no screwing around. So that's something that's very easy. You, do, you know, the home gamers doing this first time, they're going to get to that snap ring and be like, "Oh God, holy crap! Now what?" They're going to put a regular pair of snap ring pliers on it, and you know, at the at the best case scenario, they you know they lose an eye. Um, so that uh, you know, there are there are definitely some some traps you can you can fall into doing this the, the you know the actual technical side of this the performing the these services probably falls within 
within the, the the range of of what most of us are comfortable with. I would I would attempt this now, having seen it once. Now that I've seen it, though, I am glad I did not attempt it on my own before before getting to watch somebody else doing it. So, if you are thinking about about doing this, you know, get as much do as much research as possible, or even better, find somebody that's done it already and and have have them assist you with it or even better than that take it to the vet doctor in melbourne florida we threw up a couple of links for for those guys um they they are i i'm, I'm very very impressed uh, so far watching watching them work and um and checking out some of the stuff they have going on there and uh yep so yeah nick says uh bearings are standard timken bearing you can you can pick up from any any bearing house um yeah, we're we, we've actually got all the stuff from a, from a local GM parts distributor. Um, the stuff they didn't didn't have in stock, and get caught up on questions here, folks. Uh, trans diff together, pretty darn heavy. You certainly don't want to be balancing them on a floor jack. Yeah, it, 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 boy, I I would I would not attempt this with with a floor jack. And actually, what was interesting is the the torque tube itself is fairly light. When if you if you affix the jack to the transmission, you can lower the transmission with the torque tube attached, um, and not necessarily have to support the torque tube. You will have to support the engine because you you've uh, you've removed a big support off the back of the engine. So the engine has to stay supported. So once once this thing is off, you can't really move the car vertically because you're supporting the engine with uh, with uh, you know a, a post jack or, or something on under the engine uh, so yeah yeah again it, it this is this is not rocket science but there there are some pitfalls here that could be expensive pitfalls if you if you go about this wrong also uh, I want to point out a nice little trick they did was you saw the red paint sprayed on the drive shaft that was to basically index the position of that so they can Put it back together the exact same way. Just a nice, nice little, little handy thing to, to get in, in the habit of when you're taking apart something that can be put back together in various clock positions. Little, little spray of paint, and you can put it back together exactly the way it uh, it came apart. Um, and Craig, Craig says, instructions unclear. Buy a Miata. You know that's that's never a bad idea, but uh, you don't have 400 horsepower in your in your Miata. Um, Dinesh, so um, there are some drawbacks. We got one more video to show you guys. Thanks for sticking around tonight. The thanks to uh, the folks here at the La Quinta. So if you saw the the picture right before the uh, the broadcast, you saw that I've I've rolled our entire production studio into this this room on the fourth floor of the La Quinta Inn in uh, in Melbourne, Florida, because we have some stuff to finish up tomorrow uh, with with the Corvette. And uh, while I was rolling it up here, you know, everybody's giving me weird, because we have this giant box, this big video village, and uh, cameras and tripods and stuff, and I'm rolling it in, and there's this guy in the elevator, and he's like, ah, what are you, what are you, making a movie or something? And uh, I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm making a movie about, about a guy who asked way too many questions, and, and we're still casting a lead, so just, just keep talking. So I'm, I'm convinced that uh, the f folks here at the La Quinta think that we're like we're making clown porn up here or something. So I'm I'm trying to keep a low profile, but stick around to the end of the show. We're going to give away some free stuff. We'll show you uh, how you can get some free grassroots motorsports stickers, and actually uh, maybe we'll give give away some of these uh, some of these Pantene samples that we found in the in the in, in the bathroom here at the at the La Quinta because um, these are free, and I, I can even go ask for more. So maybe we'll, we'll just give away all the stuff from, from the room here. Okay, one more video here from our vet doctor pals. This is, um, oh, okay, uh, last video here. We're going to explain some of the hydraulic portions of the clutch assembly. We're going to actually show you the, the clutch we're putting in, the Quartermaster 10.3-inch uh, disc. Uh, as we mentioned before, the, the Quartermaster setup we're putting in is about 20% uh, lighter than the stock setup. Stock setup clutch, uh, pressure plate, and flywheel, J just a shade under 50 pounds. The, uh, the Quartermaster 10.3 inch single disc we're putting in is 
just a, a shade under 39 pounds. So it's a little, little more than 11 pounds lighter, about, about 20%. Um, yeah, Nick wants us to give away used Corvette parts. I'll have a few tomorrow, and actually some of them weren't that bad. You'll, you'll see on this that our clutch, our clutch disc itself uh, was not in bad shape. Uh, the flywheel, though, was, was burned up pre pretty good, and um, there were some burn marks on the pressure plate, but the flywheel actually had, had quite a bit of heat in it. So we'll talk, talk, about, um, talk about those assemblies in this next video and talk about some of the hydraulics we're going to be, be dropping in. So um, last video of the night here once again is Keith Duncan from The Vet Doctor. So part of this operation, when we're pulling the, uh, the, the back half out, as you say, a lot of the hydraulics are actually contained within this assembly too. So it's our opportunity to replace all that stuff as well. It's a good opportunity to do that now. Not so much the master is included in the job. The master is up on top and that's just the hose connection, which will be disconnecting anyway. But the throwout bearing and your clutch slave cylinder or your clutch actuator, they're one piece. Your throwout bearing is here on the end. There's hydraulic works that happen right here. And all this thing does is it pushes, sits against the clutch, and it collapses the, the, the clutch fingers and your pressure plate and releases the disc so you can shift gears. That's this thing's job. The other end of the deal is this is what everybody's used to seeing when they check their clutch fluid. This is what you're actually putting fluid into is your, your clutch master cylinder. This hooks up to your clutch pedal, pushes down, you get fluid that travels. This is collapsed and then it pushes out and releases your clutch. This is another piece that just happens. A lot of people will mistake, oh, I can't, my clutch, I need a, I need a clutch. Well, you got good fluid in it? Yeah, it's got fluid. Well, no, it's kind of low. Stop right there. Let's start looking at leaks. That's the number one fail on these is a leak. Awesome. Now, I was talking a second ago, this pushing on your clutch fingers. This clutch here, has some abuse on it. You can see that it's blue and it's, it's, you can see that it's been driven. Doesn't mean it's terrible and I don't see grooves. You didn't get down into the rivets or anything like that on the clutch. So we came in to get a clutch. Biggest telltale on these clutches are these adjuster springs right here. Most of the time these things will be all the way released, which is telling me that the metal is gone and it just cannot keep up, that the clutch just won't work. That will cause a slipping. He's about half the life of this clutch, judging by these adjusters right here. This throw up bearing, and this clutch actuator, or slave cylinder, it sits in there, and it's sitting here just like this. As you step on the clutch, this bearing pushes these fingers down, pulling the clutch plate away from the disc. Now you're in neutral. Well, you're not neutral, you're just not connected. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the, there's a lot of surface rust on our, uh, our, our, our clutch housing there. Is that unusual? Is that is that? Indicative of it's of, indicative of most of your clutches. We're in Florida. Humidity okay. is humidity. Anybody that lives here, I feel you. <laughs> so it's just raw, exposed metal. Yes. So um, we did notice uh, some some burning on our old flywheel. Yes. The flywheel had some hot spots it's a there. Thicker, thicker mass, and it always has constant heat sitting on it. Your engine's sitting right here. Okay, so it's going to hold heat longer. So when these hot spots start to appear and you'll start to feel a little bit when you're taking off. And some of you will, some you won't. A lot of them you do. Um, this is caused by slipping of the clutch. The material that's on this clutch is pretty much the same material or similar to brake pads. Brake pads do wear out. These wear out because you're not dragging as much, those of us that know how to drive a stick. <laughs> so, but after, after 100,000 miles, none of this is, is terribly unusual. We had 98,000 miles on our car and a lot of those were track miles. So this stuff appears to have been you, you know, survived fairly well over, over that this lifetime. Thing, this clutch is in so much better shape than a lot of the other clutches that I've had come in. The people that are actually going to take their car on a track, you hope, know how to drive. They wouldn't be going on the track if they didn't I, want it. That's giving them a lot of credit, but thank you. Know? you. Yeah. <laughs> if you can shift and drive and you let your clutch out, you don't just rev the engine until you smell that smell, um, your clutch will actually look like this at the end. And yes, this, this has some rust on it, but my springs aren't even rattling, so it hasn't been abused. These springs will actually, for it, when this clutch gets hot, these springs will lose their tension. And then this is a, it's a two-piece situation that's held together in the center with the, with the torsion. These springs do get weak, and now we're talking a whole other can of worms right there. All right, so as far as our replacement, we're, we're, we're bolting on a, a, a single 
Uh, this is a quarter master. Single disc quarter master. It's about 11 pounds lighter for the clutch and flywheel than the stock assembly. Exactly. W what and are this... we, when we're talking about a clutch upgrade though, what are we looking for in an upgraded clutch that's, that's going to handle more torque, be a better better track clutch? What a, are lot the, of this, you know? a lot of the information that, or a lot of the, the answers to the questions of what makes a better clutch, if this was separated, and I apologize that it isn't, I didn't yeah. realize it wasn't, um, there's the, the, the spring pressure. Here, this is an easier example. The spring pressure, if you can see, just kind of look in here, how high these things are standing up. That's caused by spring pressure. That spring pressure will push this against this clutch disc. This spring, this spring pressure in this one, and I'm, I'm sorry, forgive me, I don't yeah. know the specs on this, but the spring pressure in here is inherently higher than this would be for a stock clutch. This is nothing to sneeze at. Factory clutch is good stuff. But this one here will grab harder and it'll, it'll hold. It's, it's just a stronger holding clutch. It'll handle the foot pounds of torque coming out of your engine. So once we finish up this install, once everything is in and going, is there anything that we're going to want to come back in 500 miles, 1,000 miles, anything we're going to want to inspect, double check? It's what? always good to go back in and get things looked over again, especially going back in the broadcast. If you look back at the seals that we were talking about changing, things do go wrong and, you know, we are, we're technicians, mechanics, we're the parts guys, and... Well, you're, you're, you're we vet doctors, really, is what you are. <laughs> we are the vet doctors. Yeah. We are human. Um, <laughs> things do go wrong, um, but not here lately. I mean, it's really not that much with, with the uh, technology that's in the parts and the clutches and all the stuff that we put in there. Things that have been tried, failed, and, and retried again, and they work. We get the best collection of parts with the best people that know how to put them together, and we send you off, off on your own. I, I'd have no problem sending you to Canada. Turn around, come on back. And it says your car is going to work the way it's supposed to work. And that, that's just a good way to look at getting it done. Do I want to spend that money? Do you want it to work the way it's supposed to work? I, before I had said, Joe Mechanic can change anything. A technician knows your car. Yeah. That's just the way to look at it. And uh, once again, thank you so much to the gang at the Vet Doctor. We've, we've thrown up some links in... The, uh, the, the, the Facebook chat there in Melbourne, Florida. If you are anywhere uh, within reach of them and you have a Corvette or really any other GM high performance product that needs servicing, they, uh, I, I have been nothing but impressed watching these guys work today. And Keith um, Duncan did a fantastic job being thrown in front of a camera and uh, made, to, made to do a little song and dance on, on some short notice. Um, so. Uh, you know, big big props to, to, to those guys for being being great sports while we uh, we we do this stuff. So that is uh, our little discussion there of um, of clutch replacement in in a C5. It's um, you know it's it's not a complex operation. It's an involved operation, but there are there are a number of other operations that you should really look at while while you're doing. The clutch replacement because there is so much stuff you're that that's the only time you're going to have access to, and it's a big enough job that you don't want to do it twice. And it's worth doing some of the extra, extra work for and just budgeting the time, budgeting the uh, the the expense to get everything up up to spec that you have access to at at that point. Um, yeah, <laughs> Greg says he's got good camera presence. He, you know, he, he killed it, man. He just, he absolutely killed it. And, and, and he came to me a couple times afterwards, like, did I, did I do okay? You want to, you know, did, did, did it come off convincing? I'm like, dude, we, we, we put a lot of people in, in front of cameras and it's an intimidating thing. I mean, I, I, I do it all the time. I'm used to it. I know what I'm, you know, I, I, I kind of know what I'm doing by now, or I can at least make it up pretty well. It's not an easy thing to do to talk to a, a black square object and and you know have have no frame of reference and complete sentences and complete thoughts and deliver good information. So you know props to props to the gang there and and great info. Um, and I'm sorry about the side of my head. Again, we're set up in the the La Quinta here. Although I'm I'm excited. Uh, this is uh, after the show. I get to have dinner. This is uh, a euro. That, that I but check this out. This is a Euro that I bought um, from a food truck parked in a strip club just up the street, and I think this is going to be like the best strip club parking lot food truck Euro I have ever had. Look, there's like whole chunks of feta cheese in that. Have you ever seen a, a better 
strip club parking lot uh, truck Euro than that. I, I have not, and I'm excited. Um, all right, gang. Mm, I'm, boy, I, now we got to go. So Angela wants to know uh, if they will rebuild a non-vet rear end. There were there were non-GM stuff there that these are you know these are our um, folks that have have worked in in European cars. Uh, one of the techs there is actually a, a attendee of our MIDI. He's got a dual 13B powered Lotus Super Seven um, and Alpha Alpha GTVs and there's Jags and BMWs. These are these are professional technicians. So. You know, if you're if you're looking for a for a service place, uh, you, you could you you would you would be be wise to check these guys out. I'm I'm very impressed with the operation, and they're they're moving a lot of cars through there, and they're doing doing good work. And you can tell by the types of cars that are in the parking lot, the level of trust that the customers have with with um, these folks. So, yeah, one of our one of our locals says she knows where I I went for uh, for our my strip club parking lot. Um, Euro there, so I'm, I'm 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 excited, gang. Thank you very much. I promised you free stickers. Here we go. If you would like some free Grassroots Motorsports stickers, we will send you a pair of Grassroots Motorsports stickers in the mail uh, just by going to the link that I am putting up in Facebook right now and um, in YouTube right now. And let's see. Um, let me go through the uh, the last couple of questions here. Uh, Calvin thanks us uh, for putting on the show every week. Yeah, thank you, thank you uh, for for saying that. I'm glad we, we pulled this off tonight. As you can see, we are not in our usual spot. We're here in uh, in, in this room in in the La Quinta. Um, we had expected to come to you guys live today from um, from the vet doctor, but some technical difficulties precluded us from doing that. So we're glad we pulled this off tonight. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube and you don't subscribe to our YouTube page already, go go down and smash that subscribe button. If you're watching us on Facebook, last chance to uh, to throw us a like. And um, uh, but we'll, we'll you'll have a chance next week. Don't don't you sweat it. David says the Euro needs some hot sauce. No hot sauce on Euros, man. Euro that's more of a you got that tzatziki sauce in there. You got more of a creamy thing going on. You need to keep the keep the spice away from that. That's a, that's a, that's a taco burrito chicken wing thing. Um, thank you for, for suggesting it, though. Next week, awesome show next week. Uh, we're going to have the Hyundai Veloster R in the shop. We'll be throwing it on the scales. We'll be throwing it up on the lift, taking a look underneath it, taking, uh, taking a look inside, outside, upside down of the new Hyundai Veloster R. And... We will have uh, a representative from Hyundai on the phone joining us to take questions from you guys. So if you have questions about the new Veloster R, 200 horsepower and um, well under $25,000 for a nicely equipped one, um, we've driven it and to be honest, we're impressed. It, it, it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of competition in that hot hatch market and this is a serious player and we're excited to be able to have somebody from Hyundai on the line with us next week to talk a little bit about the Veloster. Um, just doing my last checks here, see if we have any questions. So that will be um, that will be 9 p.m. Eastern next Wednesday, August 1st. And uh, yeah, we, we, got some, we got some cool, cool shows going up. Um, Angela says, uh, thought the halo was the N. Yeah, the N is is coming. It is um, they, they, they've done a couple of early press previews on on the N, but we don't really have a date yet for when those are going to be be available for sale and, um, and and released in the US. So uh, the the R is their 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 hottest model available right now. We don't even really even have pricing on on the N yet. We just you know, got some some favorable reports from folks that have that have driven you know very early models. Uh, so, oh yeah, uh, Dinesh uh, wants us to run the Veloster at the Daytona Autocross. They're taking it away. Uh, it's it's coming. We're getting it this Thursday, and it goes away next Thursday. So we're not going to have it for that Autocross in Daytona. I, I will have the vet there though with uh, with the new clutch, and I'm excited to get it to get out on the track. I should have some of the aero stuff in place on on the vet by then. All right, uh, I gave you guys free stickers, and maybe uh, maybe we'll give you some uh, some free um, trial size uh, shampoo here too from 
from the room with the lousy uh, internet here at the La Quinta. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Please, uh, please give a, a warm round, a, a warm GRM thank you to our friends at CRC. Check, you can check them out at crcindustries.com, all of your automotive chemical needs. They are a brand that not only makes a great product, they are a brand that does great things in the motorsports community. Like support this show, like support motorsports at every level, amateur to professional, including events like our $2,000 challenge. So please check them out at crcindustries.com or even better, check them out at a store near you, Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly Auto Parts, Napa, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, Harbor Freight. You can check out CRC products at any of those venues. Also, check out our friends at AutoBooks AeroBooks. Check them out on the web at autobooks-aerobooks.com. Even better, if you're in Burbank, California, check them out in person. I said check them out a lot in the last few seconds uh, because they have amazing live events every single week. They have cruise-ins, they have cars and coffee events, and they have author signings of new books out there at AutoBooks AeroBooks. If you can't make it out there to Burbank, though, Please visit them on the web at autobooks-aerobooks.com for books, magazines, DVDs, collectibles, and any, any automotive-related thing they have. It is a, a, an icon of the automotive community. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and uh, please, please give our friends at The Vet Doctor uh, a round of applause. Keith did great. Uh, Bob Steinmetz, the owner, was not feeling well today. He's been recovering from some illness over the last week, so he was not able to join us, but uh, we'll be back there again tomorrow, so if, if you have, um, you know, if you have any questions, uh, post them in, in the chat here, and we'll try and get, get some of those questions answered, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely be seeing more of these guys, because we, we've now found, you know, within a, a, a couple hours drive of, of our home base, we found a fantastic um, service center for, for our C5 Corvette, so we are, we are very impressed. Um, yep, and uh, so yeah, Steve, uh, this will be on, on YouTube in less than an hour, so if you ever need to refer back to it, some great information, um, uh, you know, about what you're going to do when you replace your clutch. Thanks for all the likes, thanks for all the shares, thank you for watching, um, we appreciate it every single week, we'll see you again next week with the Hyundai Veloster R. Folks, I am JG Pastor Jack, you are... Some of the finest people anywhere on the internet. This is Grassroots Motorsports Live, presented by CRC Industries. I will see you next week. Good night, everybody. It's really kind of anticlimactic when I turn away and have to do it myself, but that's how, that's how we roll at GRM Live, folks. Good night. <laughs>